Hello, I'm Owen Stevens. Welcome back to the second part of this screencast on reconciliation in OpenRefine. In the first part, I showed you how you use reconciliation in OpenRefine to match items in your local data against the same items in an external data source. In this second part, I'm going to cover using facets and actions to process the data I've retrieved. I'll be using version 2.8 of OpenRefine and the Wikidata Reconciliation Service as of December 2017 for this demonstration. We rejoin the demonstration at the point where we successfully matched four journals listed in our data to the same journals on Wikidata. Once the reconciliation has tried to find potential matches for items, it has created some facets automatically, giving me feedback about the reconciliation process so far. By looking at this first publication title judgment facet, I can see what I can also see by eye in this small project, that four rows have been matched, and that one row hasn't been matched. The unmatched row appears as none in the facet, indicating I haven't made any kind of judgment on whether the row matches to an item in Wikidata yet. It could also read new if I decided to create a new entry, even though that wouldn't do anything, and unreconciled if I decided not to reconcile that cell at all. The other facet, which is called the publication title Best Candidate Score, allows me to see rows where the best potential candidate has a confidence score, which is allocated by the remote service, within a specific range. Using these facets together, I could filter the rows I'm working with in OpenRefine, for example, to find all the rows where I've not made a judgment yet, so none in this facet here, but where I have a candidate with a confidence score of over 80%, um, like that. But in this case, there are no rows that fulfill that criteria. There are several more facets I can use to check for likely matches or to check matches that have already been made but I want to double check. All of these, including the two we've just looked at, are accessed by the Reconciled Columns drop-down menu under the Reconcile menu again uh, under this entry called Facets where as well as the By Judgment which is the one we've just looked at uh, and Best Candidate Score, the other one we've just looked at, we also have Best Candidates Type Match shows whether the best candidate from the reconciliation service has the same type as you specified to match against when you ran the reconciliation service. So you can see, is the best match the same type that I was looking for? The best candidate's name match, which shows whether the best candidate from the reconciliation service has exactly the same name value. So is it the same value in the cell as was found on the remote service? If we look at one of those, for instance, we can see that in two cases, the best candidate on the reconciliation service was not the same as the value we had in the cell to start with. That's for these two. In this case, because there's some differences in punctuation, this is the name now from the reconciliation service to the Wikidata label. And this has a full stop in it and this has a hyphen in it. Whereas on my original data, if we look back at that, they had colons in, in my original data. So that's why those are different. And so just going back to those facets here, uh, best candidate's name edit distance. This shows the number of edits it would take from to get from the best candidate to the value in the cell. So again, if there is a difference between the names or the labels used, then how big a difference is that? Um, in this case, by edit di distance, the number of edits you'd have to carry out. So delete a letter, add a letter, that kind of thing, or punctuation in this case. Also the best candidate's name word similarity which is again trying to measure the same thing but in a slightly different way. This is a score calculated by dividing the number of words the label that you started with and the label on the remote service have in common by the number of words in the longer of those two labels. It's trying to assess a kind of level of similarity there. That calculation ignores some common English words and doesn't do any normalization of the word. If words had a different case they would count as different words. If they had punctuation on the end, they count as different words. So you just need to bear in that in mind when you're looking at that score. And finally, here we have best candidates types. This, this is the type from the reconciliation service of the best candidate. So it kind of matches this one here, the best candidates type match, says whether the best candidate it found matched the same type as you're looking for. And this one shows you the types of the best candidates. So you could, for instance, narrow down to the ones that didn't have the same type and then look at what types it was finding there. So if they were similar, like different kind of journal rather than scientific journal, that might be okay. But if it was something like a music album or a medical instrument, 
we'd know that was not okay. So all of these facets are meant to help us review the existing matches or make matches where they've not already been made. We also have another set of facets which are called the QA facets, which essentially serve the same purpose, they're just sectioned differently in the menu. The first one called QA results is uh, no longer used, it's another free base hangover and it doesn't do anything at all. The judgment actions, these indicate how the match for each cell was made. For example, if I bring that up, auto for these four rows that uh, were matched automatically when I did the reconciliation and at the moment one unknown because I've got this unreconciled entity here. If I decide that this does match this first item, although we know it doesn't, and then refresh we can see now we have auto and single. That single indicates that I chose that by clicking the single check mark that is just matched that cell. I'll just undo that change because we know that's not accurate. And then the judgment history entries gives you a timestamp indicating when the judgment was last made for each cell in the column. You can use that to see judgments made at different times during your workflow. Differentiate the ones you made yesterday from the ones you made today, that kind of thing. The timestamp is given in the number of milliseconds since January the 1st, 1970, which may seem uh, slightly quirky, but it is uh, a common way for computer systems to express time. What you get is a list of very long numbers. In this case, they're all at the same time, but again, if I check that and refresh, I can see now that these were made automatically when the reconciliation first happened, and then this one was made later manually by me just now. So again, I'll undo that one because we know that's not an accurate reconciliation. So as well as these facets which help you navigate data, we also have a list of actions which are available from this menu. These complement some of the actions we've already seen which you can take in a single cell. Um, but make it easy to apply actions to many cells at once. Unfortunately, several of these actions are based on the Freebase service, which means that the options to create a new item from each cell, to create one new item for similar cells, and to match all filtered cells too, don't currently do anything useful because they're all designed to work with Freebase. But the remaining options here can be used, the discard reconciliation judgments clears all existing reconciliation judgments. So I can see if I click that now, these ones that were automatically matched now appear as unreconciled and we can see that they're no longer linked in the title and we get these options underneath. We can also use another one of the actions which is to match each cell to its best candidate. If for instance I decide to filter this list to matches where we have a greater than 80% score, I get those four rows, and then I can use that action, match each cell to its best candidate. In each case actually here, there's only one candidate in each cell and they scored 100% in each if we do that. And those are all matched again, just as the auto match uh, function worked for us before. Final action in that actions list that we can look at is to clear reconciliation data. And that gets rid of all the information from the reconciliation process in the column completely. So all matches and all candidates are all completely removed. So the final option in the Reconcile menu is the Copy Reconciliation Data option. And this is to copy the information that we've got from the Reconciliation Service where we've made matches, so the, what these matches were and the judgment we made, across to a new column. But to do this, the new column has to contain the same values as the original column. I would use this in conjunction with the Add column based on this column where I copy the values. So for instance, if I use that here, I can do add column based on this column, and we'll call this publication title 2, and I'm just going to copy the value across here, and if we do that, then we can see that that creates a duplicate in terms of the values, but not in terms of the reconciliation data, and we can even see that here we have the original value of the cell rather than the value, the label that's come from the reconciliation service. So if I want to copy the reconciliation data across as well, and I can only do this for cells where I've actually made a successful reconciliation, then I can choose reconcile and copy reconciliation data. I can choose which columns to copy it to, and I can also choose some options about what data I want to copy across. I can click the copy button, and we can see now that for those cells where I'd already made a successful reconciliation, that reconciliation data has been copied across to my new column.
Now, once I've got my reconciliation done, there are a number of things I can do now with the reconciled data. For example, if I wanted to add Wikidata IDs to my project, I can actually do that directly from this column. If I use add column based on this column here, so let's say Wikidata ID, the Wikidata ID is actually stored in these cells now under this variable called cell.recon.match, that's the match you've made in the reconciliation process, dot ID, and that's the ID there from Wikidata. So I can click OK to create that column, and now we can export that data if we want to. We can also use another function here, which is add columns from reconciled values. Now this is only available where the reconciliation service supports it, and as far as I know, that's just Wikidata at the moment. What I can do here is to add other data from the Wikidata records into my project. If I click this, then it will offer me some possible properties. I can search for more properties if I want to, but obviously they have to be properties the records have on Wikidata. If I click the Scopus source ID, which is an ID for the journal on a commercial service called Scopus, then I get a preview here and I can see that that's going to bring in an ID for three lines. And if I click OK, then that now has added that data to my project. And at this point, I could, for example, offer this information back to the source of my original data, which if you remember was the KB Plus service run by GIST. I could send them a file which included the Wikidata and Scopus IDs for their journals. And for some sources of reconciliation data where I can go back to the source and make updates to the data, so like Wikidata, I can use the data I now have to add or update information. So in this case, I might want to go and, and add Gamma Knife as a scientific journal and contribute back that information to the source of my reconciliation data. So that's the full extent of the reconciliation services currently available in OpenRefine 2.8 as of December 2017. But both OpenRefine and reconciliation services, especially the Wikidata one, continue to develop. So there may well be updated or new functionality available for those in the near future. So keep tuned to OpenRefine updates to see new things coming out on that over the next few months. So thank you. I hope you found this screencast useful. I'm Owen Stevens, and you can find me on Twitter at OStevens or on the web at OStevens.com. I'm always happy to help people use OpenRefine, so please get in touch if you have questions or queries about reconciliation or any other aspects of OpenRefine.